Hey everyone, Big Pauly back for a brand new video. Yes, uh, back for my weekly watch, although it's been about 10 days, but I have seen a good amount of movies. Eight. Oh, yeah, I know it's not a lot really, but I've managed to see eight movies in the last week to 10 days, so that's a bloody miracle for me. Right, okay, let's uh, talk about what I've seen. Okay, so first on the list is the latest Nicolas Cage film, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. This was a lot of fun. This was a throwback to the good old Nicolas Cage films going to the cinema, not, you know, the weird, wacky, straight to DVD or streaming stuff. Yeah, this is about Nicolas Cage, who plays a version of himself called Nick Cage. I know. So jobs are drying up. And uh, he's not getting much work, but an offer does come his way to go out to this island and uh, meet a super fan played by the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian himself, Pablo Pascal. Yes, uh, there's a whole thing about, you know, is he the leader of some big crime organisation? And uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of wacky stuff. Uh, it's not as wacky as Nicolas Cage's previous films. But it's fun. There's some good action in it. There's some good one-liners. Nicolas Cage is taking the mickey out of it himself, which is fantastic. And uh, all in all, I, I thought it was a really good film. I thought it really was a good film. And um, I hope this is Nicolas Cage coming back to the forefront of, you know, going to the cinema. Because we need to see more Nicolas Cage films in the cinema. Uh, I gave that one eight and a half out of ten. I know. I never thought I would have given an, a, a new Nicolas Cage film that higher rating. OK, next up. A Return to Moonfall. Yeah, I decided to watch it again. Papa Bowman didn't see it, you know, when I went to the cinema to see it. But I thought I'd give it another go. And I've got to be honest, I kind of enjoyed it a bit more the second time round. Uh, I think probably because the first time I was just expecting your average disaster movie and I wasn't expecting the ending and it kind of just like threw me and it was just like ridiculous, the, the concept of the ending. It still is ridiculous, but I had a much more of a kind of a fun ride with it this time, a more fun understanding, knowing that it's just tongue in cheek. Yeah, so, um, and it seems to flow better the second time. Uh, John Bradley was a little bit annoying originally, but I kind of found him endearing in this film. And uh, especially his, you know, his connection, his relationship with his mum and that. And yeah, I, I, I had a better time. I can't lie. I had a better time watching the, uh, watching it again, second time round. Uh, my original rating for this, I believe, was five out of ten. But I'm going, I'm going to up that. I'm going to up that to six and a half out of ten because it's not one of Roland Emmerich's worst films now. Even though it does have that really ridiculous ending, it's a bit more exciting. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. What's next? Okay, The Northman. Yes. With Alexander Star Skarsgård. Oh, we've got a whole host of people in this. Anna Taylor-Joy. Uh, oh, God, I can't remember all the others. But there's, there's a few other people in it anyway. This is like a Vikings version on, on celluloid at the cinema. Yeah, uh, it's a very dark film. And it's gruesome. It's by, is it Robert Eggers? I think it's Robert Eggers that did The Witch and uh, The Lighthouse of Yet I've need to see both of those two and I took Papa Bowman to see it I I mean I didn't know what to expect um, I saw the trailer it looked okay it looked exciting and after the first hour uh, Papa Bowman leaned over to me and whispered in my ear I've got to go for a week I've had enough of this <laughs> <laughs> and he went and sat outside the cinema in the foyer for the rest of the film. Uh, and I was having and having whether or not to leave, you know, to go out there. I think Papa Bone only came to the cinema with me 
because he knew I was going to Toby Carvery afterwards. So he was only there. I mean, he could have just nodded off for a sleep in the cinema. Yeah, this wasn't as fast paced and exciting as I thought it was going to be. It was gruesome. It was dark. I didn't like the whole first hour because it was all this weird chanting and I, I don't know, weird stuff. Yeah, I'm, it's probably the director. It's, you know, if I'd understood the director, maybe. Um, but I kind of left this film feeling very underwhelmed and it did pick up in the last like half an hour. But it wasn't what I was expecting, so uh, it's not high on my list. So I gave The Northman 5.5 out of 10. Next up, Nebraska with Bruce Dern. Um, I've had this film for a little while now. I've stuck it in a black case, which it remains in a black case. It is a black and white film. Um, it is about this character, uh, played by Bruce Dern, who lives in kind of like a little small American rundown town. And he believes he's won, like the not the lottery, but um, like a sweepstake in another, in another city, in another American city. And he does everything he can to try and go across country to claim his prize. Whether or not he's won it or not, you'll have to watch the film. Well, I thought this was a fun little entertaining film. The performances were in, uh, in this were, were fantastic. Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk there. Uh, Saul Goodman. He was in it. He was really good. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And, and the lady here that played his, his wife, she was a right meanie. And um, I love her acid tongue <laughs> telling her husband what he can and what he can't do. So, yeah, uh, as I say, this was in black and white. Um, I think this film deserves to be in black and white. Although, there were scenes where, kind of like landscape scenes, when he was driving, you know, across state. And it would have looked really nice in colour with these, like, sweeping cornfields and mountains and things like that. So I think it, it missed out a little bit there. But um, I kind of think it works in black and white. Yeah, so it is a charming and beautiful film. Um, I really enjoyed it. I never was the never was bored, you know. Considering that you know there's no spaceships blowing shit up and uh, 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 no action and everything like that. It's just a character driven story of a community meeting up with old people, and you see the people coming out, old old friends and old people that come out when you've won some money or you think you've won some money. They come out of the woodwork. Yeah. I'm sure that would happen with everybody. Oh, hello. I haven't seen you in years. Yeah, I know. It's good to catch up. I know. You've won $500 million. Yeah. <laughs> They're only there for one reason. <laughs> so, yeah, that was Nebraska. Really enjoyed that. I gave that 7.5 out of 10. Yes. Next up, uh, we have a submarine film called Phantom with David Duchovny, William Fickner, Ed Harris. Uh, there's a few other well-known people in here, Sean Patrick Flannery as well. This was a pretty good submarine film. I wasn't expecting it to be as gripping and acted as well as I thought it was going to be. You know, I, I like the Crimson Tides. I like the Hunt for Red October. U571. I know a lot of people snigger at that because you know John Bon Jovi's in it but I still think that's a really good film um and this this kind of surprised me uh this was about you know Ed Harris's character who's uh this is all this is a Russian submarine so all of the actors are plain Russian characters but speaking with perfect American accents if you can get past that and uh yeah it's about Ed Harris's character who's a retiring Russian submarine captain who gets the opportunity to go out on his last mission in his old diesel powered submarine uh, with David Duchovny along for the ride. Um, who wants to test this new piece of Russian equipment. Um, which I won't tell you what it is because uh, it's best to watch the film. And uh, there is some gripping scenes. You know, uh, There's not as much combat as some of the other submarine films. But uh, there's some gripping scenes, claustrophobic scenes in this submarine. And uh, the acting is on point. 
the acting is on point with this. Uh, everybody does brilliantly. So yeah, that's the Phantom. I gave that six and a half out of ten. What we got next? Right, next one we have Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yes. Just recently been to see this. What can I say about this? This is directed by Sam Raimi. Uh, obviously stars Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen. Chuetel Ijefor or Chuetel Ijefor, however you want to pronounce it. He actually went to school with my IT guy uh, in my office. And he used to call him Chewy when they were, when they were school buddies. Yeah, um, this was a much darker Doctor Strange and a much gorier Marvel movie. This is verging on horror. You you can only see in some of these scenes with a particular version of Doctor Strange that it's straight out of like the Evil Dead type of films. Um, but I really had fun with this film. I thought it was a really great Doctor Strange film. I did re-watch the first Doctor Strange the other night. Um, I think I prefer this one over the first one. The first one is still a great film, but I still prefer this one. It's more fast paced, more action, more peril. And there's just more to do with Doctor Strange. You know, Benedict Cumberbatch gives it his all. I must say, though, he, he gave us everything on that screen. Elizabeth Olsen, as Wanda, has given us so much in you know in the marvel universe and in um wonder vision she was absolutely brilliant in this this was one of her best performances um through this film and i think you you really need to see wonder vision and uh, a few episodes of the the animated show what if if you truly want to have a connection with the film and some of the characters because we do get some cameos in the film and uh, one or two of them I was expecting because you hear it in the trailer, someone's voice, but there was also like two characters, two or three characters that are potentially maybe going to be great Marvel characters in films to come. Uh, one particular which I was very excited about. So yes, um, but uh, yeah, it was a really, really good film. Doctor Strange uh, 2, well, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I gave 9 out of 10. Absolutely. Next up, we have the Banana Splits movie. Tra la la, la 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 la. Yes, this was weird, but it was entertaining. Uh, this uh, first reminded me of Willy's Wonderland. I don't know whether or not. Maybe Willy's Wonderland got an inspiration from this or whether this got an inspiration from Willy's Wonderland. So I didn't check the dates to see when they came out. But uh, this is loosely based on a 1960s children's entertainment programme uh, called the uh, the Banana Splits Adventure, I think it was called. It's kind of like your, uh, your Sesame Street or your, your rainbow, you know, with the giant, giant people in puppets you know, in costumes like, you know, Mickey Mouse and that sort of thing that you would find in Disney. Um, it's about a young boy that celebrated his birthday and gets to go to a live taping of the Banana Split show. Uh, all shit breaks loose and um, these are not exactly what you expect. You know, if you take the, the, the mask off the head, you're not going to find a human head. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but uh, it was good. There was some good kills in it, some comedic kills some final destination type of kills and uh it was an hour and a half and it was just a lot of fun it was a lot of fun just like willie's wonderland it was a lot of fun so yeah i had fun with this one uh, i gave this one six and a half out of ten uh, and the last one that i watched which was actually last night i thought i'll put this on you know it's not too loud so it won't wake that up <laughs> i put on belfast uh, directed by Kenneth Branagh. Uh, cast in this includes Judy Dench, Jamie Dornan, uh, and introducing Jude Hill, uh, who plays the little kid. And uh, yeah, I think he should have won that. I think he should have won that Best Actor or Best Upcoming Actor. I don't know if he won anything from the Oscars because I didn't bother watching most of the Oscars. But yeah, this is uh, set in, uh, what is it, the 60s? Yeah, 1960s in Ireland. And this is the struggles between the Protestants and the Catholics. 
and the fights and that ensued and about this family that are maybe running into debt and Jamie Dornan wants to take his family uh, to a better a better life maybe moving overseas to somewhere like Australia or somewhere like that uh, it's also kind of a, a bit of a love story as well because you've got this kid that you know likes this girl in the class and he's always giving her flowers and things like that and you see like a little relationship flourish through the film uh, Judy Dench doesn't really have much to do in the film she's like the grandma in the background um, but uh, she's a fun character and uh, I thought it was really good um, it was entirely in black and white apart from this kind of this the introduction at the beginning is like the scene at the beginning is colour uh, one of the scenes that was really striking or a couple of the scenes that was really striking is when they went to the cinema when all this family went to the cinema everything is in black and white but what was on the cinema screen was in colour and I thought that was really striking I really liked that um, there is a bit of you know um, action in it so far as like riots but it's not too much, um, but um, it's important to the story. Um, there is an alternate ending for this film with Kenneth Branagh, which I decided to watch at the end of the film. I prefer the original ending. I don't really think that alternate ending has that connection. It's basically Kenneth Branagh going back to the street now this day and age you know just to just to look at it just to see where he grew up oh well well where he spent his first like 10 years or so um he's lost his completely lost his irish accent so now he's very english um as they were you know maybe going to move to england or somewhere and it just ends with a scene of him and all of the family that some of them that maybe have died are just walking down the street and I really don't think it had that much of an impact yeah now I'm glad they stuck with the original ending because uh, I don't really think the alternate ending really worked and I don't think Kenneth Branagh needed to be in the film he did you know he did a pretty good job with the direction on this so yes uh, and it's got a good soundtrack a good like 60s soundtrack as well with some good songs so that is Belfast, uh, and I gave that 7 out of 10. So there we go. So they are the films that I have seen in the last 7 to 10 days. I hope that entertained you. Um, if you have any comments or criticisms about any of those films, stick it down in the comments. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it by giving it some thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and share. See you on the next video very soon. Bye bye.